What's going on everybody? Today I'm going to be reviewing Broadsides and Boarding Parties. This game came out from Milton Bradley in 1984 and it is for two players. Now this is a pirate themed game set in the 17th century and it has two of the coolest components that I've ever seen in a board game. Object of this game is you're either going to try to sink your opponent's ship, uh, force them to surrender, or if you end up getting to the boarding party section of the game, try to kill off his captain. So, Let's show you broadsides and boarding parties. We're going to go ahead and start with the awesome part of this game, and that is these two massive ships. Uh, just look at the detail of these ships. And these ships are really big, too. Um, but anyway, uh, what you have here are you have five cannons on either side. And these are actual pieces in the game that you place on the ship, and they stick through these little holes. You also have a ladder over here on both sides of the ship, and that'll be used during the broad the, the boarding party section of the game uh, but on the ship you have a bunch of these little pirates and they're going to be they place you place two pirates uh per cannon on each uh on the deck and then you also have your captain which is over here you can probably see him um if you end up losing your captain in the boarding party section of the game you're going to lose the game you can also lose in the cannon fire uh, but you won't lose the game that way. You'll just simply replace it. Now, when you look at the deck, you'll note that there are letters on here. Uh, it says A all the way up to H. And you're also going to note that there's a number. Um, like there'll be a 3, a 4, and then a 5 on the right side. Uh, this will be used when you are firing cannons at each other. And, of course, you've got your mast. You've got four of them over here. Uh, this particular mast has two parts. It's really, really tall. Um, and then you've got two over here. Now, these masts can get knocked out by cannon fire, and this particular one is going to take two shots um, to take out. Um, so that's basically the ship. These ships are basically going to represent uh, these little ships that are on here. You're going to be maneuvering this ship around on the board, um, and he's going to be doing the same thing. And uh, what you're going to be using is you're going to be using these little cards over here. Um, you're going to place three of these cards in order, like on this section over here, and your opponent's going to do the same thing. And again, there's four different things you can do. Then these are basically going to help maneuver your ship. Uh, you got one that says turn port, which just basically means you're going to rotate your ship 45 degrees counterclockwise. Uh, so you're just simply going to turn your ship to the left like this. Uh, you have one that says move forward. Which means, of course, you're just going to move your ship forward like this. And you're just going to move him around these lines. Uh, you have one that says turn starboard, which means you're going to uh, rotate your ship to the right. So you would do something like that. And then you have remain in place, uh, which means that you're not going to move your ship. It's just going to stay there. Now, you can play any of these cards uh, on here. So if you want to like have your ship remain in place the whole time, you can. Uh, now, there's another card here, and this is the damage mass and or hull. You're going to place this card on one of those three spaces if you end up losing one of your masts or if you end up taking hull damage uh, on a certain part of your ship. And the hull is the side of the ship over here. Um, you also have dice. Now, the game came with red and white die, but I just went ahead and replaced them uh, just because it uh, just matches the ships better. And the ships, of course, are the Royal Isabella and the Seahawk. And then you've got damage tokens. There's a whole bunch of these. You're going to be placing these uh, on either the ship or next to the hull anytime your hull takes a hit. Now, there's a few ways you can win this game. One way you can win the game is if you are able to uh, sink your opponent's ship. And what you'll have to do is you'll have to knock out three of your opponent's hull sections, uh, which is the side of the ship. Here's a hull section, here's a hull section, here's a hull section, and then here's a hull section. Um, another way you can win is if you are able to disable your opponent's ship to where he can't move anymore, and he, he ends up surrendering. Um, another way you can win is if you get to the uh, boarding parties uh, section of the game, which means you're going to move both the ships together, and uh, you're going to end up doing hand-to-hand -hand combat, and you end up killing off your opponent's captain. You can force your enemy to surrender by uh, doing a combination of hull damage and taking out his mast. Uh, so if you ended up doing knocking out two of his hulls and taking out one of his masts, he's not going to be able to move, so he could just easily surrender there, or you can just end up moving in and taking him out. Um, and the other way you can do it is by uh, eliminating all the enemy cannons, the crew members, and all, and the captain by cannon fire. So if you end up knocking everybody out by cannon fire, you'll be able to win the game that way. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about how the game works. Um, let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and place three of these cards. Now, you're not going to need these cards yet. Uh, so let's just say I decide I'm going to go ahead and I'll put him back. I'm going to place this down like this. I'll do a starboard one like this. And then I'll also do 
a move forward card like this. And my opponents are going to do the same thing. I'll just throw three cards on there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn each card over simultaneously, uh, starting with the first one. So um, this is the first one for me. That's a turn port. This is his first one, which is a move forward. So what he's going to do is since he's going to move forward like this, and me, I'm going to go ahead and turn to the left. And then we're going to go to the next part. Um, and so I turn starboard, and my opponent is going to, what is he going to do? He's going to move forward again. So now... I will go ahead and turn to the right. Now, normally I wouldn't do this because I just turned. But anyway, um, he'll go ahead and move forward. And then finally, we will do the third one. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and move forward. And my opponent is going to go ahead and turn to the right, starboard. And then we're going to go ahead and remove our cards and do this again. Now, cannon fire is not going to happen until we are one space away uh, from each other on the dot. So if I were to be, like, say I was here and my opponent was here, um, this would represent a cannon battle. Also, be sure to avoid the island. You'll end up losing your movement for that turn. Now, on your ships, you have three sections. Um, the uh, back section has two cannons, the middle section has one cannon, and the front section has two cannons. Now, depending on which way you are facing, two cannons from the front, two cannons from the back, or if you are facing broadside, which means you're facing him like this, in all, all your cannons are facing him, you'll be able to fire all five. And what you're going to do is you're going to roll the die per cannon uh, that you have. And let me just show you the positioning. Now these lines over here are going to tell you which um, cannons that you will be able to fire. And here's an example of some of the ways you can fire. For example, uh, right here the white ship can fire his two forward starboard cannons or the black cannons because he's uh, one space away and the angle is this way. Now the black ship, since it is facing him directly sideways, he'll be able to fire all five of his cannons. Uh, here's another one. Both of them will be able to do broadside here. Um, now, if you are facing the ship like this, you're not going to be able to fire at him at all because the cannons are off to the side. Uh, in this case, uh, the black ship we be able to fire his back cannons at him. And here's one more example. Um, uh, let's see. The black ship can fire its port side cannons, and the, and the white would be able to fire his starboards. So it's you just have to look at these little diagonal lines to just determine which cannons you're going to be able to fire. Now the way it works is, let's just say I happen to have the, the setup like this. Um, my opponent will be able to fire broadside at me since he's facing me. Me, I will be able to fire this front cannon over here at him. So I'm going to be able to roll the dice twice and my opponent will be able to roll the die five times. Uh, each die roll represents a cannon. What you're going to do is you're going to declare where you're going to fire your cannon on these different sections of the deck. Um, you have A4 here, which is a mast section, C4, which is a mast, G4, which is a mast, and H4, which is a mast. So you can say that you're going to try to fire at the mast. Um, you've got B3 all the way through H3. Um, you can just simply say, I'm going to fire at C3. Um, and then, of course, on the right side, you have the fives, which are B5 all the way to H5. Um, so you can just simply say I'm going to fire at B5 um, and then that's where you're going to be aiming your cannon. If you end up rolling a 1, that is a miss. If you roll a 2, this means you have hit the side of the ship, which is the hull. And uh, there's two different sides here. And basically, the side of the hull you're going to hit is going to be determined by uh, which section you declared. So if you declared C5, this is the whole section for C5. If you said F5, this would be the whole section. Now you're going to end up knocking out the hole if you are able to hit the whole section twice. Um, and if you end up hitting three of the holes like that, you're going to end up sinking the ship. So anyway, if you roll a three, this means that you have hit uh, the section that has a three on it. So if you call D3, this would end up hitting D3. Now, if you're, you, now the cannonball is going to take out the cannon and the, any pirates that are on there. Uh, number four, if you roll a four, that will take out a mast. So if you call a four, you'll have ended up taking out this mast. Now, if you end up knocking out three masts, your ship, the ship is going to be uh, un, not going to be able to move at all. Um, and what you're going to do if you end up having a damaged mast or hull is you're going to use this card to replace one of your movement cards. So if you ended up knocking out a hull over here in two hits, uh, you're going to basically have to play this card and then two others. And the same thing is if you end up knocking out 
um, a mast, you're also going to have to play a card, this card as well. If you end up rolling the five, this is represents the five section over here. So if you called, say, F5, you're going to end up hitting F5. And then six means no hit. So let's go ahead and uh, do some die rolls over here and just kind of show you how this works. Uh, now, this guy has two cannon shots from the front, and he has a broadside. Let's say uh, Brown decides he's going to declare uh, F3 f3 or something and black says he's going to go ahead and declare a4 so let's go ahead and roll white did not get a hit now black called a4 and he rolled a four which means he ended up hitting the mast so what you're going to do is you're going to take the mast out and uh that represents uh one hit so now we'll go again and uh let's just go ahead and say uh white or gray decides he's going to try uh for e3 and let's say uh brown decides he's going to go ahead and try for another mass so he calls c4 so the dice gets rolled both of them miss uh, now this guy does not roll anymore since he's only firing two cannons but the isabella still has three shots so let's just say he calls for a mass on c4 he rolls he doesn't get anything let's say he uh says c5 and let's just say for example he ended up rolling a five so what would happen is since he hit this section, you would go ahead and remove both the cannon and both of the pirates. And then he'll go ahead and get one more roll, and let's just say he calls C4 the mast again, and he misses. Uh, so that's basically how uh, the cannon fire works. If you ended up having, like, say, your movement cards out here, and somewhere in the middle you turn starboard, and then you ended up within range of each other, you're going to go ahead and do your cannon fire, and then after that you're going to go ahead and... Uh, um, resolve your third card afterward. Where the game's going to get interesting is if both players end up on the same dot. If they end up on the same dot, that is when the boarding party section will start. So let's just say, for example, uh, both the ships are like this, and he goes here, and this ship goes here. Now they're on the same section. Now, depending on how the ships collide with each other, that is going to determine which direction each of these ships are going to face. Um, you're either going to be facing the same direction or a different direction, uh, just depending on how you guys end up colliding. Um, if you're facing the same direction, you'll be able to board at any section of the ship uh, when you're doing your fighting, and I'll talk about that in a minute. If you end up doing it where it's in opposite directions like this, the only place you're going to be able to board your opponent's ship is where the ladders are, and there is a ladder... Uh, right here on the front. So right now the ships are going to be facing each other so what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and move the ships to the middle and I'll go ahead and do that really quick. Uh, you can move diagonally uh, when you're moving these pieces and I'll talk about that. You won't be able to uh, diagonally uh, reach somebody's ship. Now uh, before you actually do the battle you'll do one more round of cannon fire and uh, in this case it would both be broadside um, and then you will go ahead and uh, start the uh, boarding party section. Now what's going to happen is you'll be able to have three movements on your turn. Uh, you can move one crew member three spaces or you can move a combination of them three spaces so you can move one guy two and another guy one. Uh, after all the three movements have been made uh, any pirates that are on the same space are going to have a battle. Um, and basically the way it works is you're going to have an advantage um, the more crew members that you have on one space as opposed to your opponent. So let's say in my movement, I decided I was going to move this guy one, one like this, uh, move this guy one, and let's say I ended up moving this guy one. Uh, so now what's going to happen is that I've got three of my pirates in one space and my opponent has two. This is going to give me an advantage of one. So whenever I roll my die, I'll just simply be able to add one to my roll. Uh, so let's just say I went ahead and I rolled, and I rolled a six, and my opponent rolled a four. So I went ahead and I uh, won that one, so now uh, this guy is going to be out. Now I have an advantage of two uh, because I have three versus his one. So we'll roll again. And in this case, uh, we tied. Well, now, since we rolled a tie, basically we're going to end up killing one person from each side. So in this case, I'll have lost one guy, and my opponent will have lost one guy. And so that will end up uh, doing my turn, as far as that goes. Uh, so that's basically how battling works. Uh, now, the captain will automatically add one to any die roll, but if you lose the captain, you're going to lose the game. And uh, so that's basically the way it works, and that is broadsides and boarding parties, ladies and gentlemen. 
So, my final thoughts on broadsides and boarding parties. All right, well, I ended up getting this game on a board game geek. Uh, I ended up getting it for about 90 bucks, um, and that's actually on the low end. This game typically goes for around $130 or so because it's rare. Uh, this is, again, part of Milton Bradley's Game Master series, and i got to say I love this game. Uh, obviously, the ships... Uh, I love the ships. I love the detail. I love how they have those little cannons that you can place in there. And uh, just the coolest things I've ever seen as far as components go. Um, the ships are <laughs> just awesome. Um, I really like the gameplay, too. Um, there's The tactical, when you're trying to figure out what your opponent's going to do and you're moving, I like that a lot uh, because you're trying to plot your moves. And then, of course, you have to make sure that... And you're trying to plot them to where you can get the most advantage with cannon fire. Um, because depending on how you're facing, you can either be firing... Um, and of course, if one side of your ship ends up going out, then you're going to have to try to use to turn the ship around and try to use the other side. Uh, so this game, I think, does a great job of making you feel like you are in an actual pirate battle. I like the way also that there's numerous ways you can win the game. Um, that makes the game a lot of fun uh, for me. And again, this game, th th just depending on what happens, this can be a short game or it can be a long game. Um, so yeah, I definitely like this game a lot. Um, Really, the only issue I can think of is uh, the placement of the pieces and the ship parts itself. Uh, the masts are pretty fragile, not breakable, but it's like you can just barely touch it and it might like fall off or it can get like just lost or something. And uh, the same with the pieces. On the very back of the ship, it's angled a little bit. Uh, so sometimes the cannons and the uh, little men can start to try to slide down a little bit. So uh, that can happen. Fortunately, the only time you're ever going to have to move the ship is uh, whenever you get to the boarding party section if you get there. Uh, but of course, if you're trying to move uh, little people off the ship, sometimes your arm might catch a mast or it might hit another thing. So um, I, the only thing I can really think of is just it'd been nicer if they would have had a way to keep the players and the cannons on a little bit better so it wasn't rickety, as rickety. There's a little bit of setup time with this, uh, but overall, I absolutely love this game. Would I recommend it? Well, it's expensive. Uh, that's the only thing. I don't I really have a hard time recommending games that go for like $130 because I really don't think games should be worth that much. But this is a collector's item. Uh, so if you can find it for fairly cheap around the price that I bought for it, I would definitely recommend it. As far as like the Game Master series, this is probably the easiest one out of the bunch to learn. So guys, that's my review of broadsides and boarding parties. Y'all take care. Keep on gaming. Arr!